What is MQTT? This video is sponsored by EMQX, the enterprise class clustered MQTT broker for your enterprise class IoT solutions. If you want to know more, go to emqx.io. Why do we love EMQX? Okay, and this is a sponsored message. Okay, EMQX is a an exceptional best in class enterprise broker, primarily because of their clustering technology. So there's basically two things that really well, three things. Number one, EMQX is really easy to work with. Okay, so it, uh, learning curve is very short. If you're familiar with MQTT, okay, we're in this video, what is MQTT? If you're familiar with MQTT and you understand how the protocol and the standard work, then working with the MQX is gonna be really easy. Very, very short learning curve. Number two, if you wanna build really huge enterprise class scalable projects, they have a beautiful clustering technology for their brokers. That means that as messages increase and topics increase and the number of clients connected to the broker increase, you can add additional brokers to that cluster. Think of it as, for those of you who are SQL nerds, understanding how SQL clusters work with virtual host names. So I can have a massive cluster of SQL databases in the background, the actual instances themselves, with one virtual host name that allows me to talk to a, a virtual host name that connects me to that whole cluster. And I may not know which broker I'm talking to. EMQX has very similar technology, clustering technology. So that's number two. Number three, throughput. In our benchmarks, EMQX, we've compared EMQX to basically every broker out in the market, it doesn't matter what you look at. If you look at Cirrus Link's Chariot, SCADA, Ignition's Distributor, if you look at HiveMQ, if you look at Mosquito, it does, you name it, EMQX is the most performant in all of our benchmarks. That is throughput, connections, memory consumption, you name it, it's the most performant. And, and as part of EMQX's sponsorship for us, we're gonna be doing some of those tests. So thank you to EMQX for sponsoring this series. Let's go ahead and move on to what is MQTT. All right, what is MQTT take zero? All right, if you guys have been watching our content for any amount of time, you know that the primary protocol that we work with, the primary standard we work with, is MQTT version 3.1.1 using Sparkplug B. So what is MQTT, okay? MQTT is messaging queue transport telemetry. It was invented in the late 1990s by two people, a guy named Arlen Nipper, who everyone should be familiar with. He's a really very famous, a world famous engineer, and another guy named Andy Stanford Clark who worked for IBM. Arlen Nipper and IBM, so Arlen Nipper and his company, I can't remember what the name of the company was, but Arlen and Andy worked together with Philips 66 in the late 90s to create a new industrial protocol that would jump a couple of major hurdles that the oil and gas industry was dealing with. If you haven't worked in oil and gas, okay, but you've worked in say water wastewater in Southern California, you're already familiar with some of these problems, right? The network infrastructure in oil and gas, oftentimes the sensors, the instrumentation that you wanna extract data from is in very remote locations. So to access it, I'm either accessing it through serial networks, low bandwidth free wave radio systems, satellite, VSAT, that kind of stuff. And I have very low reliability on those networks. So A, I can't check for my data very frequently using a traditional technology because I don't have enough bandwidth. B, when I do check, I don't get a response very often uh, because the network is really unreliable. What Philips 66 wanted to do was they needed a protocol, they needed a technology that allowed them to monitor their remote assets as if they were inside of a facility that had a fiber optic backbone. So they needed to be able to collect their data in a way where they they could, they could pull for it very, very quickly and very reliably. Arlen Nipper and Andy Stanford Clark invented MQTT to solve this problem. Messaging queue transport telemetry. How does it work, okay? Very simple. What they did was they created a technology where I have an MQTT broker, okay? That broker is in the middle. They took all of Philips 66 assets out here and they, so for all of their assets, they installed an MQTT client, okay? They created a very, very lightweight protocol that in a nutshell, at its, at its core level, is topic and payload, okay? So the topic will be the structure of the data. So in this case, let's go ahead and do P66 
forward slash site one forward slash temp and the payload would be whatever the value that payload is. In this case, let's do 71 degrees. Now, that payload can be anything. It could be a JSON, it could be, uh, that is, I could publish any type of context in there. I could create a JSON that looks something like this, you know, temp, so key value pair, temp 71, comma, pressure, you know, 14 bar, and then close the JSON. I could do that as the payload, timestamp, okay? So in a nutshell, the way MQTT is, is I have a topic and I have a payload. So what they did, what they did was they created broker technology that organizes all the data in a topic namespace. So P66, site one, and then under site one, I have a topic called temp. And if I look at it, the value right now would be 71, okay? Now what I've done is this will be, this will be site one and this will be site two. I install an MQTT client at my sites. I monitor all my instrumentation out here. And whenever the values change, I publish an update to the broker on that value, okay? So if the temperature in site one, every time the temperature changes, I publish to the broker, I, my connection to the broker, hey, topic P66 site one temp has changed, new value is 71. Report by exception. The client, the MQTT client, if the next time it checks the sensor, the value is 71, it does not publish an update, okay? This is, and what we're looking at here is raw MQTT, MQTT 3.1.1, the basic MQTT. If I add site two, so I bring site two online, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna configure the client to connect to my broker, and what's gonna happen is site two is gonna show up in my namespace. And if I add an instrument called temp, and I wanna publish the value, temp, with whatever value, let's say it's 70 degrees, will show up in the namespace, okay? That is MQTT client, MQTT broker, in a nutshell, where, only, where the clients are only publishing to the broker. I may add a third MQTT client, okay? And this MQTT client, its primary responsibility is, let's say I wanna visualize the values of these two temperatures, so I wanna, be able to navigate to site one and look at its temp, navigate to site two and look at its temp. I will install an MQTT client. I will connect, I will connect to my broker, a stateful connection. Arlen is, if Arlen was here, he'd get into all the details. I'm trying to keep this for the layperson. So I'm gonna instantiate a connection to the broker. And what I'm going to say on that connection is, I wanna to subscribe to everything, okay? So I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna send a subscribe command with a wildcard of a star. Okay, and what that means is, is I wanna be notified when anything changes in the namespace, okay? So, let's say the temperature changes from 70 to 71 here, and from 71 to 70 here, and they publish those two changes. Here's what I'm gonna see on this client. P66, site one, temp, and site two, temp, okay? As this value changes, I will be updated my client out here will be updated. Let me show you one more thing. Let's say I add a third site. I add site three, and I connect to all my instruments, and I point to my broker, and I say, we're gonna publish everything as it changes. And in this one, I just put a flow instrument, okay? As soon as the flow changes, I'm gonna see site three here, flow, and whatever the value was. And that will, and because I've subscribed to everything in the broker, this MQTT client is gonna see site three and flow, okay? So that is your, that's your core MQTT. What is MQTT? The key elements, okay? MQTT is messaging queue, message queue transport telemetry. It is a lightweight, edge-driven, report by exception protocol, okay? It is open. Uh, the standard is managed by the Eclipse Foundation. If you wanna see the MQTT 3.1.1 standard, I think it's something like uh, it's a very short standard. It is, it's a broker technology that was built for industry. If you go to Philips 66, all of Philips 66 underlying technology is MQTT, okay? A couple of important things, okay? This is a 10,000 foot view of what is possible with MQTT, okay? And it is the bare bones. This is MQTT 311. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about Sparkplug B. So what is Sparkplug B? We're also gonna talk about MQTT 5, the newest 
standard for MQTT, okay? Which came out uh, in 2019. But I, I, before I do that, I wanna highlight a couple of major advantages, strengths of this technology, okay? Number one, if these clients out here are out on my, these are my assets in my plant, okay? One of the biggest risks you have in industry with the previous OPC UA infrastructure I showed you guys is that I have to make my assets vulnerable by opening inbound ports in order to talk to them over native protocols. Using this architecture, you do not, okay? I can put a firewall here, okay? And with that firewall, all I have to do is, is allow outbound connections from the MQTT client to the MQTT broker, okay? Outbound connections only by opening a single port. All responses from the broker will return through the same outbound port where the edge client established the connection with the broker, okay? Number one. Number two, an MQTT client can be both a publisher and a subscriber. So what I can do is from my MQTT client out here, which is predominantly subscribing to the data that we're sending into the broker, I can also write new values back, okay? So I can take these values, create information with them, and then publish them back into this namespace with a new value. So let's say what I wanted to do with this MQTT client is create an array that had the last 10 values of this flow. I could create a topic called flow array here, and I could publish it here into flow array. So someone else could subscribe to that, okay? But also I could write to set points that the clients out on the edge could subscribe to so that I could change set points, just like in um, standard OPC architectures, okay? That's the base of MQTT. What is MQTT and how does it work? In the next video, we're gonna talk about um, the MQTT3 standard, the MQTT5 standard, and Sparkplug B, and why they matter, okay? And you guys have made it to the end of the video where we get to talk about our sponsor, EMQ. Guys, head over to emqx.io and take a look at their enterprise class broker and some of the reasons why we like everything it. at the beginning when Walker said that's his actual opinion. As you guys know, sponsors don't change our opinions. They just help make this video possible. So go over to emqx.io. Uh, thanks for supporting this sponsor and thank you for watching. Make sure to get subscribed and catch part two of MQTT when it drops. Thanks for watching.